Greetings, my name is Aurelio Voltaire, and this is my desiccated co-host, Mr. Orville Dedenbacher. You're watching Gothic Homemaking, the show where we take a tiny little New York City apartment and turn it into a tiny little gothic lair, befitting Dracula himself. Yeah, tiny little Dracula. <laughs> In any case, in our previous pilot episode, we began the process of taking this cluttered explosion in a Halloween kitsch factory and turning it into what will ultimately be a more elegant, macabre, gothic abode. And how do we do that? No. We did that by giving it a fresh coat of paint. To that end, I invited some of my sexy goth friends over for a little gothic painting party. It was quite a fun time and they transformed all of the other walls in the lair from the red that you see behind me to a cool mausoleum gray. Have a look. Ah, oh, what a pretty bunch they are. Well, in any case, now that the apartment's gray, we can begin to think about what we're gonna do with the... What do you mean? What do you mean it's not gray? It's not lavender. You completely lost your mind. That is a cool mausoleum. I'll, I'll show you. It's totally gray. It's a nice, cool, even. Actually, I think I'm going to need a second opinion. I'm going to ask the freezer nymph. The nymph that lives in the freezer. Not you, not you, Yeti. Oh, there you are. You beckoned warm one. Um, yeah. I just need your opinion on something. This color here, this color right here, what color is this? It's lavender. What? No! <laughs> no, you're useless, freezer man. You, know, you might as well just get back in the freezer. The cold never bothered me anyway. Are you serious? Are you making frozen jokes right now? You need to let it go. Oh no, that does it. Take this, freezer nymph. She was a bit of a fixer-upper anyway. I gotta change the Arm & Hammer baking soda in there. It's starting to get weird in that fridge. Well, you know what they say, if you want something done, you've got to do it yourself. So, without any help whatsoever, I went out and hired other people to paint my apartment. And now it is in fact gray. <laughs> There's no point in dwelling on our mistakes. Sure, it's kind of an expensive mistake, but let's move on. The important thing is we still have a roof over our heads. That's truer than you know. Take a look at this. This is a picture of my kitchen ceiling that I posted on Instagram a while back. Uh, there was a flood upstairs and it destroyed my kitchen. I should also point out that here in the living area, the ceiling was bowed and it looked like it was an imminent collapse. So I decided to go out and find myself a carpenter and I hired someone to put in a whole new ceiling. And yes, that's Antonio the werewolf putting up the ceiling. Remember when he came and he put that up? You were lying on the bed over there and he uh, just completely ignored you. <laughs> was that humiliating? I just thought it was so cool that he walked in and saw a desiccated corpse and he didn't think anything of it. <laughs> that's New York City for you kids. In any case, once the ceiling was up, I figured maybe we'd paint it, but then I was inspired by some of the cafes that I go to here in New York City. It is very, very common to see beautiful ceiling tiles, usually tin ceilings in a lot of these cafes and bars. So I thought to myself, huh, where would one get gothic ceiling tiles? 
Finding what you're looking for is often as simple as a Google search. So I went to Google and I typed in Gothic ceiling tiles. Now I'm a visual person, so I like to click on images. I think that's a good way to start. Immediately there was an amazing selection of tiles before me and it wasn't long before I spotted this beauty. It was called the Avalon and it's by a company called Siloom. I clicked on it and it took me to the Home Depot website. Now, I wasn't entirely sure Merlot was the right color for the lair, but one click later I discovered that it came in black. Now, Gothic means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. I wouldn't exactly call this design Gothic per se. To me, it sits more between Baroque or Art Nouveau, but it is certainly something that would appeal to people with a Gothic sensibility. So there was only one thing left to do, order a bunch from Home Depot and wait for them to arrive. My Sea Loom ceiling tiles have arrived and I am going to show you how I attach these to the ceiling. It is the easiest thing that I have done to transform this boring space into something truly elegant, spooky, and majestic. What, are you kidding me? That's a standard issue gothic construction worker look. Do you think I was gonna put up ceiling tiles dressed like a vampire? That's a good point. Now, I have put up a tin ceiling by myself, and let me tell you, it was hell. Tin is metal. It's heavy. It's very sharp. When I cut the edges to get into the tight spaces of the ceiling, I just cut myself all over the place. It was really, really, truly a nightmare. These sea loom ceiling tiles are the polar opposite. They're made out of vinyl, they're very, very soft, they can be cut with a scissor, they're never sharp on the edges, and yet, you retain all of that ornate detail. They're just absolutely spectacular and really, really easy to use. Now, how did I attach them to the ceiling? Well, I used a little bit of an unorthodox technique. I used my Black & Decker drill. Take a look. Now, if you go to the Sealoom website, and I suggest that you do, you will find the correct way to attach these tiles to a ceiling. They will probably tell you to build a suspended ceiling and to put the tiles in that. And, and I highly recommend that you do, because in fact, that way, if you want to change the color of the tiles or the style of the tiles later on, it's as easy as taking them out and putting in new ones. However, I have neither the time, the know-how, nor the finances to make that happen. So I am attaching the tiles directly to the sheetrock ceiling using my cordless drill, like this. What do you mean I screwed up? Oh, wow, I thought my jokes were bad. Well, you can't deny that the ceiling looks great. Look at that ceiling. Wow, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Thank you, Siloom. I do belong under Siloom. Anyway, there's more. Well, the ceiling is now decorated with these gorgeous sea loom black ceiling tiles. So the floor, as above so below, should also be black. Now, as it happens, I was at Ace Hardware the other day and I found these. The Nexus Collection Adhesive Floor Tiles. This is now officially the second easiest thing I have done to transform this layer into some place that looks really rather polished. You simply remove the paper and place the tile. One caveat though, to those of you who are going to use these tiles, the adhesive that is used is very, very sticky. It has about the tackiness of the glue in a rat sticky trap. <laughs> what a bummer! 
Yeah, it's pretty terrible. And if you get it on your fingers, and you probably will, and you touch the front of the tile, you will transfer the adhesive to the front of the tile. It is very unsightly. It has happened to me, and I've tried everything to get it off. Alcohol, acetone, nothing seems to work. And then quite by accident, I discovered that this works. Ben Nye Bondoff. If you're a special effects makeup artist, you have likely used this. So uh, get yourself some Ben Nye Bondoff from a makeup supply company, and not only will you be able to get all of the excess glue off of the tile, but it leaves it really shiny and nice looking. That's my pro tip for the day. Just the tip. I started the renovation of the lair months ago, long before we started shooting the Gothic Homemaking web show. Uh, I've been posting the pictures on my Instagram page. You can see here I've laid down the floor in the hallway. I've laid down this floor in the kitchen. And I even laid down the same floor in the bathroom. Now, in the bathroom, there's going to be a lot of water spillage. There's going to be some splashing in the tub. And you don't want water to get underneath these tiles. But luckily, I discovered they make black caulk. Oh my god, I have completely fallen in love with black cock. Black cock, I love it. Everybody knows I'm crazy about black cock. All right, can we move on? Say what you want, you move milker. You gotta love that sleek black floor. And that ceiling, let's look at that ceiling again. God, that's so cool. Ooh, what's that? I didn't notice that lighting fixture before. Now that the ceiling's so nice, that lighting fixture seems really boring. Perhaps we can frighten away the ghosts of so many years ago with a little illumination. And nothing says gothic like a black chandelier. A Google search provided me once again with lots and lots of options, and I found that some of the more affordable ones were at Home Depot. Perhaps I should take a walk down there myself. When you're out on the town, there are some things that you should never say aloud. So, so you swallow it down with a nice glass of scotch. You're the next one on the rocks. When you're out on the night. They had a lovely selection of chandeliers at Home Depot, and many of them were very affordable. But alas, none of them were black. I spoke to an employee there and he told me that the black ones are only sold through the website. Unfortunately, this is the kind of thing I'm going to really need to see in person to see if it's going to fit in the lair. While there, I did manage to pick up a floor lamp. It's not what we came for, but I think this is going to come in handy. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with that later. But in the meanwhile, as we continue our pursuit for a gothic chandelier, I decided it was time to take a walk down to the lighting district. When you're out on the town, there are some things that you should always keep around. Like, like Apocalypse Now and your favorite song. It'll keep you safe from harm hugs. We are in the lighting district in Manhattan's Bowery, formerly home to flop houses, Charles Bukowski drunken antics, and some gang led by Daniel D. Lewis. But now it is the lighting district. Can you believe it? Four blocks of nothing but lighting stores. All of these chandeliers reminded me of something, but I couldn't remember what. <laughs> oh, right. There's such a sad love Deep in your eyes, a kind of pale jewel Open and close within your eyes I'll place the sky within your eyes There's such a fool heart Beating so fast in search of new dreams A love that will last within your heart I place the moon within your heart. And as the pain sleeps, welcome to the labyrinth. <laughs> we better get moving. While certainly very elegant, I wasn't sure that a chandelier was quite the right lamp for the Lair of Voltaire. And that's when I saw it. Peeking out from behind a column, the perfect gothic lamp, 
a lamp made of dead things. doesn't belong in a lair. Where does it belong? It, wait, it belongs where? Say that one more time? Where have I heard that before? Uh, it's probably some kind of hunting lodge for rich weirdos. <gasps> well, that's okay by me. Upon closer inspection, it wasn't made out of dead things after all. No deer were harmed in the making of this resin lamp, but the detailing is absolutely exquisite, and I think it's going to fit in perfectly with the taxidermy theme. But wait a minute, is that another smaller one I see hanging from the ceiling, and they're both 50% off? Well, as you may have guessed, there was only one thing left to say. Wrap them up. I'll take them both. I think it's a lovely addition. I think there's going to be a lot of taxidermy here in the gothic lair that we're creating and I think it's going to fit in very, very perfectly with that theme. No, I'm not going to install it myself. I'm not suicidal. I'm going to get a licensed electrician. But before he arrives, there's something I have to do to get ready for this auspicious occasion. Follow me. Directly behind me is a light switch. Just a boring old light switch. You can't have a normal light switch if you're about to install a spooky chandelier in a gothic lair. You need to have something that really fits the occasion. And then I thought to myself, you know what would be really cool? No. Frankenstein light switch. Well, a few clicks later, I was at the Etsy page of 3D Printing Egg where I purchased this amazing Frankenstein light switch. I thought it needed a little extra ornamentation, so I masked off the area around it and painted a red border. Once the paint was dry, I peeled away the masking tape. Then I went and got a very inexpensive 4x6 frame and painted it black. Once the frame was black, I attached Velcro tape to the wall and to the back of the frame and attached my frame to the wall. And now, without further ado, I have a Frankenstein light switch. Well, now we're truly ready for Dr. Frankenvina to come and install our chandelier. But in the meanwhile, while we wait for him, Orville, remember that floor lamp I picked up at Home Depot? Right, well, well, anyway, while you were slumbering, I made this out of it. Well, I'm so glad you asked, kind sir. I call it the Cemetery Gates Lamppost, and I like to think of it as the kind of lamppost you might see illuminating your way at the entrance to a cemetery. What did I do to transform this otherwise rather boring lamp into how it looks now? Well, the first step was to assemble it and to paint all of the metal and plastic parts black. Now, secondly, I knew that I was going to want ivy crawling up the lamp, so I took a walk down to the fake plant district. And I went into one of these shops and I bought a garland of ivy, synthetic ivy, of course. Now, I noticed right away that there was too many leaves on it, so I weeded it out a bit. And after doing that, I took the entire garland and I put it into a bucket of Benjamin Moore black paint. I hung that to dry. While that was drying, I took the glass part of the lamp and I painted some, I don't know, creepy floral designs on it. I will be the first to admit, I am not particularly good with a paintbrush. I did what I could. Once I was done painting the lamp part of it, I, I felt that it still looked a little empty on top. So I took a walk down to Halloween Adventure and I scoped around inside to see if I could find something that looked like cemetery gates. There, behind some rats, <laughs> I found the last two pieces of cemetery gate. Well, I took the cemetery gate pieces and I spray painted them black. 
Then I attach them together with some black floral wire. Once those were attached together into something of a circle, I placed them on top of the lamp and in essence glued them in place using plumber's epoxy. This is the stuff that cheap landlords use to fix pipes. Instead of replacing a broken pipe, you just mix some of the stuff up and stick it in the crack and it'll keep the pipe from leaking. Once all of the components were finished, I wrapped the ivy around the post, taping it in places with black electrical tape. Now at that point, I thought I was finished, but then I noticed an artifact, and that's that when the light was on, the light shining through showed the plumber's epoxy where the gates met with the top of the lamp and that was just unacceptable so one more step in order to finish this i took the lamp off and i painted a black rim around it drawing some little let's call them uh roots if you will little root designs coming down then the lamp was truly finished and there you have it the cemetery gates lamp post it's the electrician Ah oh, yes, Dr. Frankenvina, come in, come in. Oh, 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 our guy is here. Let's toast to a prosperous year, to the new chandelier. Yes, I told you, he's a licensed electrician. Uh, Dr. Frankenvina, can I pull the switch? Yeah, my hell. Bist du bereit, Herr Doktor? Jawohl, Herr Voltaire. Ein, zwei, drei, Kontakt! It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! <laughs>